Hi, this is Eric Vega with GoEngineer. In this video, I want to show you how to control directions and orientations of forces using the Simulia tools in the 3D Experience platform. When you create any reference geometry or lines in sketches in a SOLIDWORKS part or assembly, those will be brought over into the 3D Experience platform as geometrical sets. You can see here I have a plane, a few lines uh, that I'll use for reference, and also, a little hard to see, but a coordinate system. To see these features, we want to go into the tree, into the 3D shape, expand it, and here you can see the coordinate system I mentioned, highlighted on the display. And under geometrical sets, we'll see every one of the curves that have been brought over from SOLIDWORKS. We can use this to define directions and orientations as we're setting up loads, just as well as any existing model geometry. Let's begin. We'll start by making sure that we are in the Structural Scenario app. Then I'll go to Loads. And when I click Force, my menu will come up. Notice how initially my axis system definition begins as global. This means that it's lined up with a global coordinate system that you see here on the lower right. When I select a phase or support to apply the force to, my axis system definition changes to specify. If I end up setting up a force, in this case, let's say we're gonna do 80 Newtons on the Y, that's pointing upwards, but since we want the force in the other direction due to the weight of a person, I'll do negative 80 Newtons. Keep in mind, this is still using the global coordinate system. The scale factor allows you to manage the multiplication of this force if you're doing sequential loading. Just as well, the amplitude option allows you to input a curve to control how this force is applied through the study. We'll cover this in a bit. But what if you actually want that force to be applied in different directions? This is where we can use the reference geometry brought over from SOLIDWORKS as geometrical sets. If we look at the flyout bar up here, let's start from the left to right. The first option allows you to align your triad to model geometry, lines, planes, axes, or coordinate systems. I can utilize an existing curve, as you see here, to control the direction in which the force is now being applied. You can see in these black lines how the negative force I applied is opposite to the positive y axis in this coordinate system. If we want to reset this setup to go back to the global, we'll go to the next option, Align Triad Handle with Global Axis System. Once I do so, we're back to the original setup that we had. We have the freedom of also rotating around each particular axis. When I click this toggle button, I'll be able to rotate incrementally around each one of these axes. Let's say I want to do 30 degrees around the x-axis. I can keep on adding more degrees here. To turn that input off, I'll just come back and turn off the toggle option for it. I'll realign to the global axis and look at the fourth option, which is reverse direction. This, as I click it, it's not just changing the direction of the force, but if you pay attention, the triad is actually flipping direction in the z-axis. And last, we have the ability to manually use a robot. When I click this, you'll see this little triad come up where we can actually just manually rotate the directions of these forces. Just as well, when we open up that same force command, instead of using global, we could actually click local where we get to specify what coordinate system we have to use. This requires an existing geometrical set from SOLIDWORKS, including a coordinate system. Let's erase this force and add a remote load. I'll click the drop down next to force and then choose remote force. I'll go through the same process while I click the face that I want to apply the force to, and you'll notice I have a couple more options on my shortcut bar. Let's go back and add that negative 80 newtons, so we have a visual. The first four are the same as the force controls. Align with line, plane, or axis, realign to global, rotate around an axis, 
reverse direction of Z, and the last one, enable the robot. The difference here will be locate handle at a point and enter the handle global location. These are only applicable to remote forces because these allow me to change the actual position where the force is because moments will be included in a remote force. When I make this selection, I can now select a point as a geometrical set to define where that remote force will be applied. I can go into my tree on the 3D shape, expand geometrical sets, and then you'll see I have a couple of points. When I select the point, it'll move the handle to that location. We will now have a moment added to this force on those faces. Similarly, the next option will let us actually input the XYZ locations in respect to the global coordinate system. And last, the option to enable the robot, you'll notice, doesn't just include rotation, but also translation, since remote forces can actually be subject to translational positioning. If you need a bit more precision, you can right-click the center of the robot, click Edit, and then input actual values for the positions of your force or incremental changes. The option Follow Geometry would allow this force direction to update with the deflection of the applied faces if selected. If deselected, a vertical force will stay a vertical force through the entire transient study. Now a quick look at amplitude. If we go into our scenario under setup, we have tabular amplitude and different ways to set up a curve for how the force is applied. If I add an amplitude of zero at a time of zero and an amplitude of one at a time of one, I have effectively created a ramp for how this force will be applied onto our study. Similarly, I have a smooth step amplitude, which will do the same thing, but with a smoother change in rate. Once I accept it, to apply that curve to the force or any other load I've added, I'll go back to it and then select what amplitude to use. This will give us full control over the orientation, direction, and rate in which the force will be applied. This has been Eric Vega. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tips and tricks on how to use the Simulia tools in the 3D Experience platform.